Today we're going to go through the eye-to-eye uh, -eye connection setup and the parts and how it operates. So we're going to start with the parts that you're going to have. So we'll start at the top. You're going to have a high gain antenna. It's going to look like this. It's going to be mounted on your tractor cab. There's going to be a mount that holds it to the tractor cab and it'll come with all the fasteners to mount it. And it just stands straight up and down. There will also be a plate on the side of this mount where you're going to mount this antenna. This antenna is going to mount on the top beside this one. There's a sticky pad that goes on the bottom that will hold it to the stand. You're also going to have the CL55 in the tractor cab. This is what's going to communicate between the antennas and the monitor and send signal back and forth between the monitors you're using. To connect the antennas to the CL55, you've got the antenna here, and there's a Wi-Fi Bluetooth port here, and there's a cable that's going to run between that port and this antenna. There's only two plugs on that plug. The other antenna here is going to plug into the CL55 with these two wires. There's four wires coming out of this antenna. The red one is not used. This is a red plug. And also the one, the yellow plug is not used and it says Wi-Fi on it. You're going to use the blue plug. And on the CL55, if you unplug it, you'll notice that both plugs are blue. They're color-coded. The same as the purple plugs. Same plugs. So it's very easy to connect. You can just tie these two wires off so that they're out of the way. So you get to the CL55, on the other side there's two wires. The large plug that's on this side is going to be used to connect to the power. There's three plugs here that are not used. There's an RS232 plug, there's a Deutsch plug, and there's a CAN diagnostics plug. They are not used, they can be tied up. The only plug in this harness we're using is to put power into the system. It's a three pin Deutsch plug and it's going to tee into the monitor harness. So the other harness that you're going to get is a little T plug. It's going to be tied into the power coming in from your power supply for your monitor. And one T is going to go to the CL55 harness and the other one's going to go to your monitor harness. The other plug we have here is an Ethernet plug that goes from the CL55 to the back of your X35. There's only one place it can plug in, these two plugs are different. So it'll plug in the one closest to the large plug, and it just runs up, goes to the X35, and on the back you take the cover off and there's an Ethernet plug on the back of the X35. That's all there is to connecting the system together so it can communicate with the other monitors. Now that we have our CL55 hooked up to our monitor, we need the setup in the monitor so that it's enabled. In order to do that, we want to go down to the wrench in the bottom left corner and touch it, which is going to take us into the settings. We want to touch on system, features, and implement, which will take us to the implement features. We then need to touch on eye to eye, M to M coverage sharing to ensure that it's enabled. Once it's enabled, hit the checkbox. Now we can connect to the CL55. To go back to the operating screen to see if we're connected, we press the little running man, and we want to open up the mini view for the software. So that's the little Borgo icon at the top. We're just going to touch it, open the mini view, put our finger on the center of that, and drag it to the main view of the screen. We will see the software version and a bunch of other information about the monitor at this point. What we're looking for at the bottom is the IP address. It should be 10.42.0 and the last three numbers aren't important. If it's 192, you're not connected. It needs to be 10.42.0 in order to be connected to the CL55. When the CL55 is connected, you'll have four lights on the front of the box. The four LEDs, so the red one, indicates that the CL55 has power. This will go out when switched power is turned off, but the CL55 will stay powered up for up to a minute before shutting down. The CL55 has internal battery power to be able to be woken up for future diagnostic features. 
The amber light indicates that the CL55 has a cellular network connection. The green light indicates that the CL55 has a Wi-Fi connection to another CL55. It will go out if the implement is out of range from any other CL55 equipped implements. Blue indicates that the CL55 has a GPS position from its connected antenna. Now that we have everything connected and communicating properly, we need to create the same client data and product data in each monitor. For that you'll have to have everything set up on one primary monitor and you're going to need a USB drive in the USB port on the back harness or on the back of the monitor. So we've got our USB stick in already. So in order to transfer that data over, we need to go to the inventory manager which is this little garbage can, pencil and USB stick and touch it. That opens up the inventory manager. Now we need to transfer our information so we touch on categories. Then we want our products, so we can touch products, hit the checkbox. We want to transfer the whole list, so we want to highlight everything. So on the right hand side, this top box, it's got a little gray box with lines. Touch it, highlights everything. Then we can just simply go down to the arrow going to the USB stick, and it transfers all those products to that USB drive. We then need to do the same with our client package. So we can go down to clients, hit the checkbox, and highlight everything again with that same button, gray box to the lines, and transfer to the USB drive. Depending on the amount of client data you have, this could take a little bit of time. Once this is done completed, you hit the checkbox, and we now have that information saved on this USB drive for our client list and our products on that USB drive. We can now take this to the other monitors that are going to be using the eye to eye, because all field names have to be exactly the same and the product names. So we take that stick and we can take it to another monitor, and in order to put it back on the other monitors, we're going to press this little one that looks like a USB stick. It's going to say Inventory Manager USB at the top. So from our categories again, select our clients, highlight everything, and then we just simply transfer back using the USB stick with the green arrow. Same thing for our products list. We want to highlight everything again and transfer it as well. We now have our two tractors on the screen. You can see the one that's on this monitor and the one with the little bubble here. That's our other monitor that we're connected to. The consoles can have their own jobs created at any time, and the coverage from that job will be shared to connected implements any time the implements have the same field loaded and are applying the same products. The shared coverage and remote machine layers need to be highlighted on the visible map layers list. To see that, you press this little button up here that looks like four boxes in a line, and it brings up the map layers. We need to have shared coverage highlighted. This will show the shared coverage of other connected implements on the map. So that's this one right there. Remote machines will show a vehicle implement icon on the map for other connected implements. That's that one right there. When all conditions are met, you will see any connected implements on the map with a vehicle implement icon and a connected connection status icon. So if I hit the checkbox, that's what we're seeing right here. Also, as that implement applies coverage, it will appear on the map, and each implement will turn off product application according with ASC control. The vehicle implement icon will show a connection status symbol for each remote machine. When it's connected, you will see this little icon look like that, and if you touch on it and hold it, 
it's going to give you the information about that machine, the products it's applying and the name of the machine. When the machine is not connected, you'll see that there's a line through the little bubble. And if you press on it again, now it's going to tell you the information again, but it's going to say not connected. This means we're either out of range of the antenna or we've lost connection to our CL55. When you're out of range or disconnected, the other implement is still going to be recording coverage. And when you get your coverage back, that bubble will get the line removed from it and the highlighted coverage from the other machine will be updated onto this monitor as well, which we're seeing right now. As you can see that other monitor moving now. With the shared coverage, the local coverage of the implement will be displayed as a light green. So you can see the light green on this map and that's for the, the coverage that this unit is covering. The shared coverage from the other implements will be displayed as a darker green. So that's what we're seeing recording right now. When the vehicle implement icon is pressed it will also highlight the shared coverage a different shade to show the specific coverage for that implement. Being as how we only have one we're only going to see the one color and it's not going to change, but if you had more than two you would see that. If you create a boundary while sharing coverage, it will apply it to the combined coverage, but the boundary must be created on each individual console. So once you have your boundary created, you need to go in and create that boundary on each console. The yellow that we're seeing is coverage that is highlighted from previously when the monitor was power cycled. So that's our coverage from yesterday.